two minutes is quite enough. So first of all, this is a session done by Anton Prasuk, who is an Ukrainian Wikipedia. Unfortunately, he was unable to come uh, because he was, didn't receive the permission. So I'm in his stead. If there would be any mistakes in the performance, please do not attribute that to uh, us. <laughs> uh, so, uh, not to us. <laughs> So this is Asad, he is a uh, Ukrainian Wikipedia editor and admin, and he is programs coordinator. Uh, I'm also a Ukrainian Wikipedia uh, uh, editor and administrator, and I'm, uh, in my lifetime, I'm doing Wikilos Monuments Ukraine. <laughs> That's like the difference between us. So, um, we have led dozens of presentations, both of us, different audiences, trainings about Wikipedia or 10 plus years. And we also had trainings for trainers. Wikimedia Ukraine conducts uh, trainings <laughs> for people who are then going to be given trainings to other people because it's a bit different uh, perspective. And uh, this was, as I said, created by Asset for Ukrainian trainers as a session. And we adapted it for the international audience. So this is the first time that this is being produced in English. And uh, we hope that uh, he would be able to be online, but there is no hybrid, or there is like no streaming, so no. Uh, and uh, yeah, please be patient with us. Um, so we wanted to get some introductions, so this was going to be a small room as a workshop. Um, go through most important topic points about Wikipedia to convey to newcomers then widespread questions about Wikipedia. They may vary, vary in different land, uh, countries, but there are also some basic ones that repeat. Then there are common myths about Wikipedia, and using some uh, practical examples and success stories, we also put some resources uh, to use, and you know, Q&A, you'll see how it will go. Uh, and to, just to manage expectations, uh, this is how to present Wikipedia to newcomers. This is not how to edit Wikipedia. And uh, uh, this is also not about presenting wider Wikimedia movement, because that's a very different topics, different audiences, and very different uh, uh, presentations. Um, so we want to focus on what to talk about and not how to be an effective presenter. I'm not going to start talking here how to be a good public speaker. That's a, again, a very different skill <laughs> for this session. And uh, each topic we be mentioned as a us sharing what we know and asking you as the audience about what you know. Uh, because um, it can also help us when we build this presentation and make it better, more international. So raise your hand. If you have received a question about Wikipedia from a non-Wikipedia. Uh, raise your hand if you ever spoken about Wikipedia to a group of non Okay. And raise your hand if you have ever delivered a formal presentation about Wikipedia. So, you know, not just talk. Okay. Raise your hand if you have not presented Wikipedia formally, but would like to try. <laughs> You're like, not sure where you are. Not sure how would you go formally. But, uh, yeah, so our definition of formal was like a lesson for school, for uh, students, a webinar, or a guest lecture, and not over coffee explaining about Wikipedia. Something more formal, where you go with slides and talk to people, a bunch of people. Uh, my most formal one was once to a cabinet of ministers of Ukraine. I was explaining to them why we need free licenses. <laughs> so, um, so two things. Again, we are thinking about external audience. We are not thinking about uh, you know people who know about Wikipedia. So, um, if you are talking to an external audience, you might want to start with something that you can understand uh, their. Uh, I don't know, the ambition of Wikipedia. And starts through some like a quick exercise about points, which points they would believe are incorrect or correct, because that would help you to kind of figure out what they know, 
and how you can combat and what to start. So I'm just giving here as an example because it doesn't look as if there are people who don't know <laughs> about that. But it's, you know, like, as a check with volunteers, whether it is a commercial project, whether it's a volunteer project, it all helps you just understand your audience better when you're looking to know Wikipedians. Sometimes Wikipedians also don't understand exactly what is Wikipedia, so that's a different thing. So what do you think are the most important points about Wikipedia to convey to uh, non wikipedians okay. You don't. You don't. Hey. You ask questions, uh, like you were asked questions. So what are the points that you believe are the most important? You have like, a, I don't know, half an hour conversation. You are going to talk with some debaters and somebody. What are the topics that you want to know about Wikipedia, for example? First thing I do is talk about three knowledge you do the idea behind, the, the broader idea behind Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So the mission, mm -hmm. what the mission statement, just the free knowledge, what is there and where we're, how and how we contribute to it. Mm -hmm. That's a very difficult topic to convey to people. Yeah. In a short, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. if yeah. they don't prepare. But then, yeah. I would focus on that. I would go straight to uh, what Wikipedia is, that anyone can edit it, that there are uh, ways and means how to uh, check all those edits. Uh, that it has educational moment, that it has uh, com communication with uh, gland solutions, for example, uh, what can be found there, how it can be used, and, um, and uh, let's say that there is a community which can be reached out to if you want to know more. Something like if you explain so much, you will kill the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it depends on your audience, yeah. right? Yeah. It depends. This question, or it right is this question, depends on who you are talking to. If you are going to talk to a class of five year or wait, 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 like a fifth uh, form uh, students, that's like one audience. If you're going to talk to somebody else, like I don't know, dignitaries, again, you might talk about uh, mission. If you believe that the minister whose website you have checked before and know what are the talking points of the minister, that you can you know, reuse the materials and say in the words that are good for them. If you're talking to somebody else, you're going to probably like, yeah. most important points should also depend on the I should start from it that Wikipedia it is knowledge. You should trust to it. Well, it also depends if you're talking to like, yeah, some professors bit. and scientists. That's probably not the words you're going to use, <laughs> like trust, because yeah. scientists do not trust or should not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> should but not. you should trust, uh, otherwise there is any point to, to, it's to deal with. It's it. not about really what is true or not, just what facts are. Yeah, I think the first question to ask before this one is what do we want them to do? Do we want them to edit? Do we want them to release content? Do we want them to... Yeah. Yeah. It also what you want, but also like the audience, yes. So, big disclaimer. So let's have realistic <laughs> expectations. Editing Wikipedia is a rather strange hobby. It is a strange hobby. You are sitting at home, wasting your own resources, your unpaid time, you are paying for books, or some subscriptions, or whatever else, and you are trying to figure out how to combine whatever you have read in one sentence on Wikipedia because you want to edit them. So it's a strange hobby. And not everybody is just prepared and be ready, is ready to actually contribute to encyclopedia. The style of encyclopedia is also very dry. It's dry for people who are actually good with words, <laughs> not enough expressions, and everything else that comes from that. Just like you cannot expect people to share your hobby, say, mountain climbing, it's not a strange hobby, but not everyone likes it. There are people who like it, and there are people who don't. That's it. The same with Wikipedia. Just do not expect that 100% people who come to your trainings or who come to your talks are going to do that. They will not. That's uh, all our like trainings and everything, all our experience, it doesn't happen. And it is OK. It is like totally OK, and we should not expect many uh, of our audience members to become editors. What we need to expect them 
to know and to know how to read Wikipedia better and to understand it better after one talk. You can expect from people who are enrolled in a course or something else where you can try to talk with them about the mission, where you can talk with them about the rating of their, I don't know, free content at some point in time, some other ways. But if you have one talk with people, what you can do is kind of um, elevate their understanding of Wikipedia so they will not probably share some fakes or disinformation on social media. They would not go on Facebook and write a post, oh, Wikipedia said that, or I don't know, something like, like you know, things. They would not also make their life uh, choices based on an article on Wikipedia. They would check the history of the article. Oh, you know, they would be able to, oh, yeah, there are no sources in this article. I should not just trust it. And if it's like a special like medical article or something like that. So what you can expect, you can help people to understand how it works, what are the shortcomings maybe of the model, but also just, just to understand it better. And uh, uh, maybe some of them would be more interested, would donate, would, would do more, more things in other ways, like, you know, contribute a picture or something else. Not everybody has to be good with words. And uh, four most important points about Wikipedia, as a disclaimer from our just position. So Wikipedia is a volunteer project. This is important to understand and maybe stress uh, a few times because people have un uh, uh, unrealistic expectations of Wikipedia. They want Wikipedia to fix things. They want Wikipedia to write about what they care about. They want somebody to do something and they don't understand that it is all done by volunteers. Yes, there is staff involved in some, like so we have plan. Uh, institutions like uh, Wikipedia and the residents, but they're like tiny, tiny minority. They want to be able to change a lot. Um, and uh, also to understand that there is no centralized editorial office that they can complain to. <laughs> because that's another thing that people do not understand, uh, especially people from the outside who don't edit themselves. Then Wikipedia is a global project. So it's a popular web, uh, resource in the world, one of the most uh, uh, popular. Uh, it, is, it has uh, language editions and even though there are like some common principles, every language edition has their own rules. So you cannot assume that if on Ukrainian Wikipedia you can create this article, you can just go and create it on English Wikipedia. English Wikipedia and German Wikipedia have very different standards from the Ukrainian Wikipedia. So you need to be like aware that yes, this is all Wikipedia, but they are all very different. And uh, also like, uh, you know, that they are not divided by languages. Uh, in some countries, it's very difficult to explain because when people are hearing Ukrainian Wikipedia, they believe this is a Ukrainian Wikipedia belonging to Ukraine. There is like one country in the world speaking this language, <laughs> so it looks like this is the Wikipedia of this country. But then, like what I'm using at the, uh, at the talks, I'm saying, okay, who owns English Wikipedia? There is no country that owns English Wikipedia. It's not, there is no country English. <laughs> so, you know, it kind of helps to give a case that, yeah, because German Wikipedia is like, there is Germany, yeah, Austria, but you know, who talks about Austria? Not German. Um, so, in the same way that it's difficult for monolingual to understand, it's a, like a good case to just like use. Now, uh, Wikipedia is a non-profit project based on the idea of free knowledge. And uh, here we might not, depending on the audience, we might not use very complicated words again. But the important part is to, if your country is using uh, a system like public broadcasting, then you can explain that this is a project which is uh, being funded by a lot of people so that no one can influence, no one entity can influence, just like with public broadcasters. If you don't have public broadcasters, then it might be like a bit more difficult to explain the concept uh, because, uh, I, I mean, at least in our region, <laughs> in a lot of uh, countries, there would be like state-funded uh, media and then, or private-owned media, and then it's more difficult to explain. Um, so there are no ads. Uh, 
there is like uh, no charging for access, and again, depending on the audience, everything can be like these asterisks here because they are not charging for access. And then you can think about a Wikimedia enterprise, and you know, depending on the audience, you might receive questions about Wikimedia enterprise because we are charging for Wikimedia enterprise. But the Wikimedia enterprise is aimed at huge use of uh, Wikipedia knowledge, and so it's like you know, uh, it's uh, not for personal, or not for like small institutions. But again, you would need, like, as, as with every statement, there might be somebody in the audience who knows something or heard something, and they might ask you a question. So you also need to be prepared to explain. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, you might also use this, again, depending on the audience, you might want to encourage them to donate. But if you're doing it in a more or foreign country, or if your audience is like students, <laughs> and not rich oligarchs, then maybe you, it's not a good point to make, uh, to encourage them. So Wikipedia has rules and practices uh, about uh, reliability, and that's why you are talking about sources and basically Wikipedia being a mirror of what exists. So if you are upset with something, uh, Wikipedia is not your first stop where you should complain. You should go and complain to some uh, you know, journalist who made a mistake in some article and perhaps the truth or the reality is misrepresented. Not Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not going to be the first one to change. And uh, again, reading Wikipedia articles with uh, uh, a critical eye, always. Like, you need to tell people not to trust. And it's not only about Wikipedia, it's like, do not trust anything that you read just on the first go. Somebody is writing something on Facebook or somewhere, or Twitter somewhere, and you agree with that. It should not be like that. Like you need to check. Um, uh, is this like actually true before like sharing it uh, further? So like critical eye should be not on Wikipedia, but like to anything and everything. Um, I don't know how that went on time. Uh, I can tell you that uh, when we are uh, asked about the reliability of Ukrainian Wikipedia, because you know it's online and anyone can edit it, uh, we use an example of our uh, encyclopedia, printed encyclopedia, which was printed like in Ukrainian literary encyclopedia or something like that. It was printed in the 70s or 80s, and it was in print, and it was actually cited a fake. Um, uh, that hoax created by one of our writers who was working in an archive and found a really old paper and he created like a translation uh, into Ukrainian from an old Irish monk's poem about the destruction of Kyiv in 12 something. So he wrote that as a translation, right? So it can be later, it doesn't need to be dated. It was already very old. So it was cited in that uh, they never got friends, the guy who published the encyclopedia and the writer. <laughs> uh, but it also uh, was not discovered. Uh, like, it was discovered after it has been printed on a Soviet base for like thousands of libraries and you know like the whole country. And it is a printed source. You can cite it. So uh, the problems can be anywhere, at any level. It's not on Wikipedia because it's online. And widespread questions about Wikipedia. So what questions about Wikipedia do you hear most often from non-Wikipedians in your life? Uh, why we should uh, uh, waste uh, some time on uh, something that uh, they don't pay us. So uh, the first thing that uh, we uh, should do is to clear their mind that uh, what uh, does the volunteer uh, means and uh, what uh, the and what is this, the Wikipedia that, uh, uh, why you, you should uh, take your time for editing something free and don't get paid for that? Uh, that's the most important question for the beginners. And I think the first thing that, that uh, you should do is to clear their mind. It's like, oh, so impressive, six million articles in the English Wikipedia alone. Why would somebody do it for free? I usually do a presentation uh, not what is Wikipedia, but actually address uh, 
can you even read properly Wikipedia? And through this, I show the elements of the screen, left side, basis of the article, external links, categories, and everything. And through this, we then uh, 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 cover all the topics. And then uh, also, the first question is who checks uh, what is written? I think the, the question I heard most often was, but who writes this? Who wrote all of this? <laughs> like, people like you, really? <laughs> there is like no professional board who validated it? How can I trust it then? It like jumps from an extreme trust often, like, oh, there is definitely like a big uh, organization behind Wikipedia. So I'm like, oh, people like you? Why do I, do I trust it all these years? <laughs> Some, uh, some man came to me once and said, uh, are you real? <laughs> it, uh, it's, uh, you're the first person that I know that uh, does this. Uh, I always asked myself, who is writing this? I remember once receiving an uh, invitation to like, uh, a limited uh, meeting with uh, because in one of my letters, I like signs that redact redactor can Wikipedia, meaning like, you know, editor. I didn't say editor in chief or something, but they were like, ooh, editor of Wikipedia, you know? <laughs> yeah, it just reminded me one of uh, Wojciech from Poland who said like, he once filled in the accreditation form, and they said, what is your monthly readership? He said like, what, 100 million? <laughs> I actually, yeah, uh, but I actually showed them statistics about a uh, few articles and I said uh, for my most read articles, I guess it's about thousand readings a day. Wow. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. So that question that we hear the most in the media you I mean, we combine our experience and we create a video <coughs> Who writes Wikipedia? Can I really edit any article? Uh, what should I do if I find an error? How can I trust Wikipedia if I not can edit? Uh, why is there no article about a writer I know? Can I write an article about myself? Why is there so few good images? And who funds Wikipedia? How can I contribute to Wikipedia? And why should I spend my time contributing? And then you need to tell people and be prepared with the uh, answers. Uh, we have created a video about that where we are talking about these things just to uh, also like explain to people but also like help other uh, Ukrainian Wikimedians who are uh, faced with those questions. Uh, we are not going to go through that but uh, like, you know those questions you uh, unless you feel that there is something that you would like to see what the audience also thinks about because why should I spend my time contributing? My thing is anyone kind of can edit Wikipedia, but you don't have to. If you don't like it, don't have to. That's like the thing that I want people who are attending like my talks or first, like if you don't like it, that's fine. Just like know how to read it, but that's the most important part. Um, so yeah, that's what I want. You know, if, if there is a question. Mm, I think there is uh, the sixth one. Can I write an article about myself? I think it is uh, very important to explain to people if they ask such a question. Yeah. 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 We also try here explain about pain, pain uh, like particles because there are people who want to write and then when you explain to them that you cannot write, you should not. I mean, you possibly can, but you should not do that. They will just turn and pay somebody money to do that because then they, they are not writing about themselves. <laughs> so like here, this is like a following up question. And if you want to, uh, you should not also pay because you are not going to have control of the article. This is not like a your approved page. <laughs> and that's something that people do not understand. Um, 
Yeah, the seventh question is my favorite one because whenever I get, I get asked this, uh, I have an opportunity to explain why um, and also um, to uh, get some new allies into lobby before, I, don't, I mean, government organizations, for example, to, to um, publish under the Creative Commons um, and also, of course, to participate at Wikilogs X. Yeah, we use that. Uh, sometimes if you have a really bad image, you can show it to an agent or somebody or that person that is like famous person and say, come on, you know, give us a normal picture so it's not... Um, and we also had a, uh, after the Russia invaded Ukraine for the first time, uh, in 2015, we had a, uh, like a lot of Ukrainian articles were using the articles from the uh, website of President of Russia because they were under free license. So it was easy just to grab and say. And most of the articles uh, where the pictures were used were like uh, uh, Putin, uh, like sh sh handshaking uh, some famous uh, sportsman, and you know, like black like, like people, famous. So what Ukrainian Wikipedians did first, they like cut. <laughs> they just left, like, because, you know, like, you just, like, grab a picture and that's it, you just put it. But now, if you don't want that picture, you need to go and crop the image and then put it in And that was actually the arguments that we used for our uh, cabinet ministers and other ministers. Like, you know, they have three pictures, you don't. You don't give us free license, you have to use their pictures. That was, like, one of the things, like, one of the blocks, not, like, uh, everything, but that helped. Yeah, I think when you, you talk about uh, sources of the official Russian, official Russian sources, it's very essential to explain that uh, the Russian speaking Wikipedia is not a uh, possession of the Russian Federation. It's just somehow source of the Russian speaking culture. But they are totally different things. Yes. Uh, well, uh, again, it's like context dependent. It's a bit difficult to explain that to Ukrainians because the Russian media as any language edition is largely based on the articles, on the sources in that language. And um, the, the thing that uh, uh, there, was a, there were conversations in uh, the previous session was about AI, how AI and uh, can, can influence with all the hopes and everything else, everything else. I can tell you that uh, because Wikipedia is built on sources, states who have or I don't know, some bad actors who have enough money and resources can do a lot of damage to Wikipedia by not changing the articles directly, by influencing the sources. What gets published, what gets published on a you know like serious level, how the information is being presented, that's that can influence Wikipedia a lot. Just like we are talking about AI actually taking things from Wikipedia. So basically depending on us, the more they develop, if they do not kind of like invest in uh, Wikipedia, in some way, I don't know how, how it can happen, uh, Wikipedia is going to decline because of the, you know, not enough donations, not enough visibility. It would be very difficult to maintain what we have if there are no donations. If there is not enough money coming, that would be very difficult to do. So they kind of might uh, kill us in a way. In the same way, Wikipedia is using and relying on a lot of published other on journalists' work. If journalism, if newspapers, if uh, you know, all this media is going to decline because of AI and because of anything else, we also are going to be in trouble, uh, troubles because if there is no investigative, independent journalism, uh, research happening and everything is controlled by somebody, we are not going to be able to also exist. So there is like a whole ecosystem, things depend on things. And so there are like myths that people have when they enter the room. Uh, they can be more aggressive about those myths or less, but in any case they could have them. Uh, so anyone can add their opinion to Wikipedia and claim it as a fact. Uh, 
there are a lot of jokes about people going to Wikipedia and changing the articles because they wanted to win in some discussion or some you know, conversation. Then also, if uh, I'm an official representative of a company, I have exclusive rights to some article. Uh, changes made to Wikipedia article cannot be undone. That also happens. And that Wikipedia is a source of truth, and every article can be trusted because all articles are of equal quality. That also happens, mostly in some legal languages, like I don't know, English Wikipedia, monolinguals read only about know, things they know. And then, if I live in Poland, I cannot edit Czech Wikipedia. So, and, no, you want to go, right? But uh, about opinions, you're talking about private and encyclopedia, even though anybody can edit, anybody can also divert the edit. Uh, then so this is not a blog or a place to publish these uh, thoughts. It has to be published somewhere. This is also a very best concept. It's not going to be working very well for some other countries or some other regions, like for example in Africa, where they do not, because of the whole historical reasons, but also colonizing and everything, they just don't have the same you know, ability. It's the same for Ukraine. Our first encyclopedia was published when it was uh, Soviet Union, so you know <laughs> they put whatever they wanted to put there. <laughs> they didn't really care. About the first, the first encyclopedia they tried to publish the diaspora, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but not yeah. in Ukraine, technically. But even now, the difference in the the sense, the authoritative, independent sources. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about newspapers as well. That's uh, not the tricky stuff, in fact. Yes, yeah. but you know, uh, any source can be a not reliable source on something. Even like you know, New York Times can publish something they haven't checked or whatever. Uh, the same with uh, you know, uh, a British newspaper might not be an authoritative, independent uh, source on I don't know events happening in Czech. Right? Yeah, you know, just just can be that some something can be. On the other hand. Um, some independent or more remote uh, source can give a better understanding. So it depends. Uh, even on the English Wikipedia, they have been looking some, uh, uh, you know, some uh, uh, outlets. But for example, for sports, uh, like when they are reporting sports, they are okay to use because they are just reporting what was the score, <laughs> but not for some political uh, information. And then about if you are an official representative, so there is no ownership, and uh, there should be references and reliable sources. And I remember somebody contacting me and said there was a mistake. And I was like, yeah, fantastic, but that was a mistake made by journalists. Uh, and I cannot, like, you cannot cite uh, what hasn't happened. You need to have some other source, like figure out who can publish, give an interview, talk about this, <laughs> like make it, make it uh, known. <laughs> and not just the uh, you telling me. Uh, changes meant to Wikipedia article cannot be undone. We should say that stores are made by the edition, and if you make a mistake, you can easily correct it. And if somebody made a mistake, you can easily correct it. There are shortcomings of the other system, but there are also the good ones that anybody can help. So there is no one person with a hammer. And then Wikipedia is a source of truth. We do not need to embellish uh, for people. So people do not come out of your talk and thinking Wikipedia is the answer to like everything. <laughs> it's not, because then they are going to read something that they are going to be upset, or somebody is going to create an article about them if they are notable. And that person is going to be upset uh, because they were expecting all us to be angels and we are just humans. Yeah, and uh, of course, the English Wikipedia is uh, Wikipedia, <laughs> but some of these uh, articles are actually worse than articles in some other countries. Like, you know, about things that are important for your culture might be better in your own language. Is that not English Wikipedia? Want to say something? No, 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 it's okay. Uh, uh, just, the, you know, you say that English or um, that English is generally better. I have to think about that, if that is really true. Yeah. I doubt it will be. 
Yeah, I, I guess you can look at this from the number, from the number of topics that they are getting covered, and yeah. uh, from the quality of the articles, like the quality of individual whatever they, they are calculating the average or the penetration of the topics and things like that. So in general, the English Wikipedia is better. It has more editors. Yeah. It has bigger community. The bigger the community, usually the better the, the, the quality. And if I live in Poland, I cannot edit Czech. So again, by languages and not by countries, uh, English Wikipedia as a case, and uh, that there are rules in different Wikipedias. When I'm talking to the Ukrainian audience, I usually talk about, uh, you know, there are like rules in the Russian language about how they spell things, and they say, now Ukrainian, and that's for Ukrainians, it's very upsetting, but you have to respect, either you go to the Russian Wikipedia and you respect the rules and edit within them, or don't go there <laughs> um, I mean, to, to edit. And uh, uh, the reason is not, uh, Wikipedia just follows the sources. So, for example, it took us like almost 20 years to get Kiev changed to Kiev. So, the, the similar thing there was in the Estonian Wikipedia article about the Volodymyr Klitschko. There was uh, the big struggle. Is it Vladimir Klitschko or Volodymyr Klitschko? Yeah. Yes. So, decolonizing knowledge cannot happen just on Wikipedia. You cannot de start decolonizing knowledge from Wikipedia. Wikipedia can help, Wikipedia can reflect. Wikipedia can, you know, Wikipedia can state what other sources might not have space for. Meaning uh, that uh, Kiev is spelled Kiev, but Ukrainian sources, blah, 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 will start to use, but there is a campaign. So Wikipedia has space for presenting that there are more than one way of looking at things, which is a strong uh, side of Wikipedia that not a, a lot of other outlets have. It has, but decolonizing cannot start from Wikipedia. And what other myth have you heard? Uh, related to the second myth, um, that was about if I am uh, the official representative, right? Um, a funny myth that I have, I have every day is that uh, people come uh, representing companies uh, and they say, why don't you let us write an article about ourselves. We already have a TikTok and we already have a Facebook page. We also want to have a Wikipedia. And uh, this, uh, we were able to trace the source of this misunderstanding. It's because the mobile carriers in, uh, in our region, uh, they offer uh, like uh, inexpensive bundles where you can only access uh, Facebook and uh, TikTok and Wikipedia uh, on the internet. So, uh, and Wikipedia gets bundled within this package, and uh, this is their source of confusion for these companies. Um, it might explain the confusion in your country, but I think that uh, official representatives coming <laughs> and demanding this space uh, because they want to be a page just like with any other uh, platform is uh, very common. Related to that, oftentimes they come asking to change their profile, right? Like they use this, this word, right? Like, can I change my profile? So yeah. that's when I have to be like, no, 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 actually, it's not really a profile. So, yeah, another point. Um, something else is uh, someone said about some news. Is, uh, I was there, I, knew, I saw what happened there. I know this is. So you have to write it or uh, about some people. Uh, uh, that is my cousin. I know him. I know uh, what he's done, and uh, you should write this uh, based on the knowledge he has and your sources about it. Yeah. Or a similar version. I'm a bigger expert on this. I have a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So or. Uh, when they're famous people telling us, the representatives of the affiliates, that they want things removed from it or added because they know themselves better, or it's like a defacing their public image. Uh, and since, well, in Serbia there's a lot of corrupt politicians, they want a lot of things cleaned off of their profile, as you say. 
and the most beautiful I had on this topic is when you deny them and they say, but can I speak to your manager? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, where do you heard this? Oh, in, and she told me like, oh, I, I do have some friends who does it for, and it, it becomes like their set income activities. I'm like, we don't do that here. So I was like, um, okay. Then we had to do like a reintroduction of what Wikipedia is because it was completely off topic. So I think that was an interesting thing to get uh, exposure, but that there are people doing it uh, for money, and we didn't know that because we're not это кейс of parliament uh, in Ukraine was uh, confirming some uh, somebody to some position like ministry or something somebody actually I think it was from the IP of the parliament itself uh, went to uh, his Wikipedia article added that the, the person is involved in some corruption scandals and that copy of the article got printed and handed to all members of parliament. They open the, the papers, they read about the candidate, and they are like, why do we need to appoint him? He's like in a corruption, active corruption, like investigation or whatever. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think the story was that they like changed the candidate last minute. So they wanted to nominate somebody famous who had like an official biography written by the government. They replaced with like more obscure person. They didn't have a biography ready, they copied from Wikipedia. <laughs> but the political opponents already prepared the article. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to common belief, 
<laughs> uh, actually, personal stories work better than statistics. You can give statistics and people can be impressed with it, but then they do not remember things. If you tell people some stories, if you tell people something that happened, like this funny story that we have shared, that can be like, remembered by people more. People like other people, people like uh, stories about people, people like examples, people can have something that they can relate to more easily than millions of articles. Can you give us an example? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it can be useful sometimes just to, to, to think about what are the personal examples you can say to people who are non Wikipedians to explain to them what, what can be useful or how Wikipedia can uh, help. And uh, your personal example might work the best because this is a story that you know. <laughs> And you can motivate people in uh, uh, you know, different ways. When I'm talking about things, uh, if I have time, of course, it depends on how much time you have, and the audience and everything. Um, I uh, 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 registered on Wikipedia in 2009. I had no idea that there are any other language editions except English Wikipedia. That's what I was reading, uh, even though Ukrainian was existing back then. I registered because there was a mistake, and I wanted to correct it. I went there. I corrected the mistake, I made the preview, and then I somehow thought that, oh my gosh, everybody in the world is going to see that I did it. And it felt like too much <laughs> to do. And I never saved an edit. Never. I was registered and went away. And I continued reading Wikipedia, but I didn't edit it. In 2011, I read an article about a Ukrainian poet was writing during Soviet times, who, uh, who was very kind of like naive. He was living in a, so in a oppressive state, but he believed in democracy. He wrote um, letters to Stalin and whoever else that in his village, the doors and the, the doors were barred to the school where the elections were happening. There was no election. No one ever put any ballot. The doors were locked. But the next day, all the newspapers published that there was like 99.9% .9 uh, people showed up and this uh, candidate. So he wrote those articles, those uh, letters. Of course, they were intercepted. The guy spent like almost all his life in camps because he was a dangerous element of the society. And he was writing poetry in Russian. Then finally, uh, closer to like the independence of Ukraine, he came back because, you know, ever since the state was falling apart, he came back, but he had a prison record. No one was giving him a job. He returned. His life was like ruined, like forever. So uh, he received finally some job as a guard in some school. He switched to writing poetry in Ukrainian, like last two years of his life. And then uh, his po when his book of poetry was being published, somebody uh, uh, like beat him and he died. No one cared about him, and so you know. I read about him and I was like, I just can't publish about him on a blog. I want to do something more. So we went to Ukraine and Wikipedia, remembered that I have an account, and I started creating an article about him. The article about him was already crea created and deleted. It didn't scare me. I opened an article I, uh, and I was like, okay, how do I create an article? I started reading other articles about writers, what people put in their articles. So that's what I was doing, and I did it in one edit. And I had no idea that Wikipedia has a main page. Or people, like, you know, I created an account. I had no idea. I always loved Google. I never went to a main page. I had no idea that there is a main page. I had no idea that there are other people. I had no idea that you can look somebody's uh, edits or whatever. I was all doing articles and, you know, taking all the templates, all the things that was like useful. And, you know, I created it. Uh, I, I had no idea, but I was flagged as a fake account. <laughs> Maybe sock puppet, because no one knows and without any edits, create one article, like, you know, an article with like everything. I was immediately yelled at by some long-established editors that I have done a long categorization. I was like, 
waiting. <laughs> no idea. Oh, no. So yeah, like, like you know, like I have no idea. But you know, all of that, and I kind of survived. I was contacted. My first edits were contacted by the most trollish um, uh, Ukrainian Wikipedians who were like, you know, um, a long, <laughs> come a lot, <laughs> see <what you're> on, <laughs> you know. Like, like, you know, like the most, like, heavy, like, and again, they had no idea that I was a girl. They were talking to me and I'm a boy. And then when I, when I edit, I might, like, you know, like, they go, like, once they learn that I'm a female, oh, a constructive female entered our community. <laughs> like, you know, this has never happened before. <laughs> yeah, so, um, that was my personal uh, story. <laughs> so, it can happen. Um, so what we were thinking is general resources when you want to look for some, you know, articles. It's the beginnings of the year because they already published. You can look them out. You can share the some general stories. We can interview this other Miram Dorfer. Then there are Vicky Celebrate and there are C stories uh, about our own beauty. And then uh, Sarah Horvat and, you know, other people. Then there are videos from Wikimedia Foundation in English that also can be used. Uh, and we also have different stories in English because uh, um, before uh, February 24, 2022, we were non-existent, but then suddenly everybody noticed that we do exist. <laughs> and the uh, signpost wanted to make something about us, they wanted to collect the stories, and you know, we were writing, so you know, we also have some coverage. But, it's like a, a really see example. If you want to get noticed, <laughs> you need to be nearly killed, <laughs> and then everybody wants an interview or a moment with you. And um, do you know any other sources that you want to like, or can recommend, share? Because these are like more general ones. Yeah. Uh, I got during these sessions of presenting Wikipedia. I also get questions about money, how is this finance? And there's a lot of stuff, or well, not, not a lot, but I kind of answer briefly. There are also a lot of statistics on meta and yeah. on the WMF side as well, that are very useful to give people an idea of how much money is actually involved. Uh, and that helps as well, I suppose. Yeah. And yeah. It helps to know that you are not hiding information. And then people know that they can yeah. check for themselves, they can, you know. Uh, and there's also this idea of can be uh, on a broader scale or on a small scale. There's lots of statistics, say, let's say, uh, hidden in Wikipedia. There's, for example, the information about the page, where you can see how many yeah. uh, page views are there. But there's also loads of statistics on a language level, so to say. Yeah. Showing a few yeah. more. Yeah. At the sea, uh, state of yeah, the yeah, sea. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, we are surprisingly very good at hiding things. No one notices any button. Like, <laughs> it's like a mystery how all those people don't see anything except for the articles that they need. They are like, are you asking, like, yeah, like, yeah, I read an article. Have you noticed there was like an edit? There is like some tools, there is a statistic, there is like. Just stuff. Yeah. So it's very creative method where you can put stuff and no one is going to ever be able to find it. <laughs> so the same as with the other tools, we have all the tools, we have the statistic, it's all hidden so well that even Wikipedians might not be able to find it. So the general population is. Um, whenever I introduce, uh, I introduce someone to Wikipedia, I uh, make a point to show them two, two pages after they have done their first edit. Uh, one is the history of the page and they can look and see their name. And I also um, encourage them to add the page to watch list and to come back after a week or something like that to see what else was contributed to that page. This will help them understand how, how dynamic the whole process is. It's problem, 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 unity. If I'm having a training or explaining to people who are actually uh, like, you know, are going to be in 
involved in some kind of like editing, like for example, some, uh, I don't know, people from some ministries and something that they are interested, there are like topics that there are like things that they are, uh, they still want to, like, I mean, we should also be aware that we cannot just ignore the problem of people wanting to use Wikipedia. They are going to go and edit with us or without us. So it's better if we can explain about the things that they should not do, it is like really important. Or, for example, help them to even like understand the situation. If you registered, you can watch list something. You can also put a, a remark that you're going to receive emails. It's unuseful for me to have that check mark uh, in my uh, settings because I'm editing like thousands of articles. Um, but uh, you know, uh, on comments, I do have that check mark because if a file was changed, it might be something important. <laughs> With articles, too many changes can happen, um, and also so they can sign up and they can receive. If, they, if their watch list is small, they can see if somebody is vandalizing the page of the of the ministry of the workplace. So you know, so. you could also tell them about the thank you button link. Mm. Yes. Also the kind of people, just keep you read a fantastic article. You could just, you know, thank the person who created it. Yeah. That's a good thing. Um, two areas. Um, one is I found that the, the diff platform for folks to submit articles and stories about, you know, either their community or their organization or just their kind of individual experience contributing to the movement or being part of the movement in some way. Um, I do think that I see a lot of authored articles from individual contributors that make for very good stories to share and to bring attention to certain community dynamics or kind of community needs in some cases. Um, and I do think that the like movement comms, the communications team, the foundation, like provides some good support for people to consider contributing to that platform, even if they haven't, you know, like written for like a blog before or something like that. I think they provide good support for people who are doing that for the first time. So I learned about a lot of new Wikimedians through Diff, for example. The second area uh, I wanted to name was um, I like to visit help spaces on a number of Wikimedia projects to see who is sort of positioning themselves as a mentor to new folks on different Wikimedia projects and also to see what people are asking help for because often they are coming in with a story to say, this is my situation, this is my problem, this is my background. And I, I see a lot of kind of elaboration on that that I think is very interesting to, to observe and to learn about sometimes. Yeah. Okay, good. Additions? Anything else? Yeah, I <laughs> so we are going, of course, to share the slides with clickable links and the Telegram chat and the Lightroom Media Commons. And uh, there are also short video explainers that can be reused. Uh, there are also similar projects in different languages, like this one will be Wikipedia 101 in Turkey. And there are also videos in Estonian and Ukrainian. And then there are FAQs, very extensive FAQs on English Wikipedia that can be useful and reused, translated. Um, like, uh, Sometimes these FAQs are also like useful just like when you're presenting because then you know what people ask. Uh, then there are books, uh, English language course about Wikipedia and WikiLearn, and there are there are like, uh, for educators resources and uh, uh, we create um, we create standardized like uh, slides for presenting it because that like a support from Wikimedia Ukraine to our trainers. That they can put whatever they want to put, but they already have like a structure, uh, so they know what to cover, and then just put the examples that they have with the audience that they want. And uh, yeah, uh, if you have any other. This one? Yeah, yeah. 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 Put it like that. Mm -hmm. But there are loads of educators working with UCI and institutions as well. So don't only think of the 
yet maybe some classrooms, so to say, but also to all the other people that want to share and educate, etc. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, I think that's it. So questions and answers. We have no idea how long it's going to take. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, questions and hopefully answers, I don't know. One of the things that could be worth showing, but then also not, is the page view page, right? Yeah. Uh, for some people, it can be like good motivation, but then sometimes they also say, oh, only 20 people saw my article. Well, that's not so, right? So it's kind of like a double-edged uh, knife, right? Yeah. But yeah. It, it could be. You can yes. say you didn't write an interesting enough article. Come back and ah, add some more. Depends on the topic. Yeah. Yes. For both. Yeah, from this point of view, I was asked once, like, and what is your most popular article that you have ever written? Uh, I checked the two and I realized my mo the most popular article I have written was about Panama Papers in Ukrainian. <laughs> it was a very clear story why it was so much written because it was a typical story. Oh, I see something in the news, no article yet. Let me quickly write something. And like most of you would probably be, don't know what your most popular article is, but it probably makes a very interesting story to tell. Yeah. But it changes. Oh, obviously, yes. Yeah, yeah but still, she kind of calculates who has created yeah. the article. Yeah. Well, published top 10 official articles, something. Yeah. That's Wikipedia. And then. Moses. The only thing you have to do is see if your name is there. If you use the name, it's just. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. I I listen frequently messages, messages, notifications uh, that that somebody uh, read your article. Yes, yes, yes. Many times don't even read it. Yes, uh, some of us will read articles a lot, might not remember that this was the article started by us. What did it happen? Yes. Bubbles, because that's what non Wikimedians are. Bubbles, they are not magical people who can create things. Um, it's uh, a very different reality, and uh, it's very different, uh, difficult also to take them to us. And some of them should not be taken, <laughs> because they also might be, um, I don't know, um, changing the culture too much <laughs> to the worse. Um, Okay, I can unleash you, or we can continue talking. I mean, Wikipedians can always talk, I'm just not, not entirely sure uh, what to do. I finish too quick, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe a CEE topic, very controversial. Uh, so, you mentioned in one of your slides that uh, the Wikipedia is a language project, and we know that. So when you look at the Heart of Balkans, we have Serbo-Croatian, Serbian, Croatian, and Bosnian, and uh, Montenegrin one is still in the incubator, incubator yes. So uh, based on what I've heard, uh, Montenegrins want their version so that they can write things that are closer to them in a way. But if you already have four Wikipedias in, I will say it, but don't quote me, uh, one language, <laughs> uh, why would you need fifth language in order to make it like a national project in a way? Yeah. I, I my answer. Can I? Yes. For instance, there is a little difference between Serbian, Croatian, and Bosnian. And there is a quite a distinctive difference between uh, Montenegro and Serbian, because Montenegro is Latin and Serbian is Cyrillic. Okay, so that does not make it a valid point, because you have double uh, scripts in Serbian and also in Serbo-Croatian, meaning that every article can be Latin or Cyrillic based on what you choose. You can cho choose uh, the characters. This is too complicated. That's one <laughs> click. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, one click too much. Yes. <laughs> but it's still but what is Cyrillic? It's not fun. But it's still the question about the self-identification. 
if they identify themselves as a Montenegro, they should create their own Wikipedia if they want to. So it is a national project and not a language project. Yeah, yeah but German, in any case, I agree. Yeah. No, it's definitely a language project. Of course, I'm yeah. a there are lots of people that want us to be operating on a national scale, but if you fall into this trap, it's definitely a language situation. That's what it is. I mean, uh, it. I come from that region, so yeah. I know how everything is complicated. I just wanted to let to like get yeah, your opinions on it because it is it is something uh, like. How do I say? There are so many different opinions. Yes, Montenegrins established their own Montenegrin language, which is two letters more than the Serbian or the Croatian one. Uh, and then they are working on the, let's say, national rising or establishing. Uh, but having five different uh, Wikipedias with basically same context, just politically colored in many different shapes and colors. Uh, and regarding with all the things that were happening with Croatian Wikipedia, yeah. and basically people running away from Serbian or Croatian Wikipedia or Bosnian Wikipedia, going into Serbo-Croatian as their safe haven, because it's like a no man's land. Uh, it means that the, the rules are not that restrictive as in others, and let's say nationalism is not that visible. Uh, now having fifth one, which would also lead to its political side, is something that can create additional problems. And but then the rise of fifth, and who will decide which language has the right to publish in Wikipedia? Yeah. Because in, in Estonia we have two Wikipedias, and one of them is not a language, linguistically, it's just a dialect. But they have quite a strong self-identification and they uh, create also some 5,000 articles or something, but they still uh, have some uh, self-identification. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so it's community projects. It's yeah. already going into yeah. the politics, because yeah. politics are a part of life, yeah. and we are all humans. So it's still, you know, uh, what's the difference between a dialect and a language? Yeah, exactly. An army yeah. and <laughs> higher education. Uh -huh. So if there is no higher education, uh, my strong belief is that should not be Wikipedia in that article. Uh, it's that language because uh, there is no knowledge happening, no changing, because you know, it's publications, it's like everything. It's very difficult to do if the language is a minority language, uh, just, just difficult. The, the, uh, the early decisions of just like, let's open everything, uh, leading to the problems that we have there. Uh, Lancome had difficulty to resolve that because at some point it stops being just to be the language and goes into the uh, everything else problem. <laughs> Self identification is one of them. Uh, they do use not only ISO, uh, that there is a standard, whether there is a language or not, there is like an international whatever committee, they, have the, they give uh, every language a code which yeah. you use. And uh, they gave, as far as I remember, and I don't remember the details, there is like ISO, and it's easier what? to receive, yeah. ISO slash, not slash, uh, hyphen two, I think this is, or three, is like actually what is important. Um, why, uh, why it's difficult for volunteers to close or to make unpopular decisions, should be very clear to this room. It's very difficult because you are very reachable and you know, somebody can be very upset with you. Uh, but at some point, we would need to make some difficult decisions uh, about closing Wikipedia, about merging, about figuring out how else it can work. Because again, it was the early uh, years and there was a search of let's just create, let's just like, you know, not be ill. There were a lot of other like, things that were created without checking other enough uh, active editors, community, you know, actually like support for that language and everything else. It's them. Um, but uh, uh, I think that creating a fixed Wikipedia just because the four first were created is not going to help. <laughs> and uh, that's that's the, that's the problem. That it's also very like there is like a, a very strong um, like what do you call it in, in uh, American law when there is a case it could be resolved enough, it's like a precedent, 
there is a very strong precedent. We have four precedents. Why can't we do it? And the precedent is very, very like a, like a, it's like a, it's like a norm <laughs> in the Wikimedia world. If it has been done like that, we should do it, continue doing it in the same way, which is actually not uh, the right approach ever. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, do, you see, do you see an option that uh, Serbian Wikipedia can? Accommodate this kind of needs and, and feelings to the Montenegro that, that they can they can feel themselves at home there or because because you said language wise it's a very very minor difference maybe some almost non-existent I mean we were all same country right. then we were smaller part of the same country and a little bit more I know the history, so but yeah uh, we I mean I don't know how big the language community of how big the community of editors from Montenegro is. I know that they edit Serbian Wikipedia and Serbo-Croatian Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So I guess that is already you know, bridging the gap, whether you are, because there are part of uh, Montenegrins who declare themselves as Serbs, so they write in Serbian, just like people from Bosnia write in Serbian or whichever land in the world that they speak Serbian as their language. They can write, obviously, in Serbian Wikipedia if they know it. Uh, but then uh, I know the discussion was that people aren't able to express their opinions uh, in their own language, which is, I think if they weren't able to express their opinions, full stop, that would have, that would be a problem. That would be like a suppressing the other's voice. Yeah. But this way, it is totally fine to write, like we have, uh, dialects, which is EKVN and IKVN. Uh, we use both of them in Serbian uh, Wikipedia. Uh, so I guess there is no trouble with their writing system to be used in uh, in Serbian Wikipedia. So that wouldn't be a problem. And there's a session to yes. tomorrow, I think, about this. So if there's more. There's a session where you can hear them in the English language, talking about the issues from their perspective. Uh, very difficult, just like I, I don't know, wiki source. Why do we have wiki source in other language? I mean, I know why, because the Hebrew wiki source wanted to have a different direction of writing, and back then, uh, Media Wiki was not able to do that. Too. So they had to split, and after that, they started splitting all of them. But for example, we have a problem with that because the Ukrainian language is very different at different stages. I so, just, uh, you know, I how, how do you put uh, things? Uh, just recently, in uh, previous weeks, I, I tried a Hungarian resource and it was different than the English and the way I missed some tools and it mm -hmm. works differently. And I, why it doesn't work? Yeah, and because on smaller, smaller, smaller languages, smaller communities, it's never going to be maintained. How are you going to maintain so many, um, you know, websites? You can't uh, maintain Wikimedia Commons. Mm -hmm. Like, just now imagine, like, Go ahead and update every 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 language. Language. So you are right. I don't see the yeah. reason for Wikisource in many languages. Yeah. And yeah. the funnier story about Ukrainian Wikisource is that because it was historically different and because the border was a bit vague in different periods of time, we had a big debate on Ukrainian Wikisource. There was a source which was written in a mix of Ukrainian and Russian. Oh yeah. I 